Hi everyone, my name is Laura and today I'm going to be recommending BL manga that have amazing male-on-male -male love representation. If you follow me on TikTok then you know that I love reading BL manga so choosing just five to recommend to you in this video definitely was a challenge but I'm pretty happy with the ones that I'm going to be introducing to you guys. So I'm going to start with a series that you guys probably know that I absolutely love and it's one of the sweetest portrayals of a relationship and just the coming to age story. This one makes my cold heart just do a bunch of flips and get all warm and fuzzy. This is the one, the only Sasaki Amiyano. Like, if you have watched the anime, then the manga is just as sweet as the anime. <laughs> Definitely one of the cutest reads that I have in my whole entire collection. So this is a story that follows a young high school boy first year. Our little cutie Pai Miyano happens to identify himself as a Fudanshi. And if you're not familiar with the terms, a Fudanshi is a male BL fanatic. <laughs> But Yoshi is for girl BL fanatics, Budanshi is for guys who just adore BL. Not every single BL fan will use those terms to identify themselves. Like I don't openly go out and like identify myself as a Fuyoshi, but I mean that's that's a whole thing. I just enjoy BL and I enjoy romances. You would think that a boy that happens to love to read BL and recommends BL to his senpai. <laughs> You would think that he would be so certain about his identity, but that doesn't uh, seem to be the case. So this is very much a very fluffy slow burn, so it takes a few volumes for anything to happen <laughs> romantically. But for myself, I just really enjoy getting to see them interact, getting to see those sweet moments and kind of like realization that maybe this is more than just a... A friendship. This is maybe more than just, you know, a lower classman looking up to his upper classman. Like, maybe what they have is, uh, you know, something special. When I say there are some very, very sweet moments, I am not joking. The amount of times these two boys blush and do cute things, I, I just love it. It's so, so cute. So if you're interested in reading just a very sweet romance, if you're looking for like a classic shoujo romance vibes, even the art style is very much inspired by like early shoujo with those big expressive eyes, uh, look no further than Sasaki Miyano. Not only do you get amazing gay representation, and it takes a few volumes for like Miyano to get more comfortable with his uh, sexual identity and also Sasaki. Sasaki tends to accept it much sooner but you do get those moments of realization from both of the characters that are just very you know comforting and reassuring to read especially as you start getting the supporting characters uh, finding out about their identities and finding out about their blooming relationship so this is just a very very cute read. It, the volumes are on the shorter side but regardless it's an amazing read. If you don't want to read it, want to watch the anime, highly recommend that as well. There's also a light novel too which I'm very much looking forward to reading. Along the same vein as Sasaki Miyano, here I have I Cannot Reach You which does focus on two boys but these boys have known each other since they were little kids. So here we have the two friends right here. We have the boy that has had a crush on his childhood friends since they were very young but is very unsure about whether his feelings will ruin their friendship. This story happens to follow Kakeru right here, our blonde boy, and Yamato who is this very quiet introverted character. Unlike Sasaki Miyano, Although there are some very cute interactions between Kakeru and also Yamato within all the volumes, this one... <laughs> you definitely do feel for Yamato a lot of times. Like it is at times a little bit of a frustrating read, but since there are a lot of you know uncertainties and Yamato himself is just dealing with so much baggage. Um, he hasn't come out to his friend. He's dealing with his feelings towards his friend. There's just a lot that he's bottling up that as you start reading this story, little by little, 
things come out, his jealousy comes out, his possessiveness comes out, his feelings cannot be controlled anymore. So there's just a lot of um, a lot of emotions that a young boy ha is having to deal with. And you might be thinking, how does Kakeru feel about all of this? Is he gay himself? Uh, within the story, you do find out that he does have crushes on girls, but he's not repulsed by the thought that Yamato might have feelings for him. You do often see him blushing, and over the volumes, you will start seeing something. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it, but you do see uh, there's definitely, you know, something other than just their childhood friendship. I happen to really enjoy this. Like I said, it is a slow burn, but it's just such a sweet story. I always happen to cling on to characters like Yamato that are very quiet, introverted, and are clearly dealing with a whole slew of things. Like I just want to like hug them and protect them. So for me, I just really enjoy seeing how much Yamato grows, how he opens himself up to love and trying to be, you know, there for Kakeru, but in a different way. Like he's just struggling with trying to find a way to kind of <laughs> break out of the friend zone. It's a very sweet story, not as sweet as Sasaki and Miyano that has my heart like doing cartwheels. This still makes my heart you know, nice and gushy and just gives me all those good feels, but sometimes <laughs> you know, my heart does end up suffering a little bit with this series. So definitely check this out uh, if you do like uh, something that's a little bit more heart-wrenching and will take you on an emotional journey. My next recommendation happens to be one of my favorite romance series of all time, one of my favorite BLs of all time, one of my favorite one shots of all time. Like it is that good. I've talked about it so many different times, but it's so good that I have to recommend it once again. And it has incredible representation. So here we have our dining table. This is what I wish all one shots would be like. It gives you great pacing, great storytelling, amazing characters that you can actually learn to appreciate. And it doesn't feel rushed. Like it just gives you such a complete story. A lot of times with one shots, I just kind of uh, want more. And I mean, me being a little bit selfish, I wish I could still read more about these characters, but this one just left me satisfied. Like I was just so content reading. So the story with our dining table is that you have this office worker who we later learn is actually adopted and has never learned to appreciate and enjoy a comforting meal. One day during his lunch break, he happens to go to a park where he meets this little boy who happens to be a, a little bit hungry. And him being the nice guy just, you know, decides to share his lunch with, him, with the little boy. And from there he meets the little boy's older brother who is just so pissed off that his little brother just took <laughs> took this complete stranger's lunch. So after that cute interaction and his first real experience of actually sharing food, um, he happens to go back to that same park where the little boy actually goes and looks for Onigiri Man. So after that, as a way to apologize to the office worker, uh, the little boy's brother decides to invite him to their house so he can actually, you know, prepare a meal for him. During Mr. Onigiri's visit to their home, he happens to teach them how to make his famous onigiri. That way the little boy can have them whenever he wants. In these panels, you can really see them bonding over food, which is something that was completely new for our office worker. As I previously mentioned, the office worker is adopted, so you do get to see some of the backstory and how he learned to resent uh, just eating and spending quality time eating with other people. So over the course of the story, you get to see the two men bond with one another, and you get to see y Yutaka, that's his name. <laughs> His name is not Alphys Worker, his name is Ditaka. You get to see him learn to appreciate that quality bonding time that happens when you're just eating with people that you care about. 
since this is a romance story, you do have the two male leads falling in love and coming to realizations that the feelings that they do share for each other, um, they're not just, you know, it's not just a regular friendship. There's more to those feelings. So you do get some, <laughs> For those of us who love romance, there is a lot of satisfaction when these two actually do get together. And overall, it's just a very sweet and touching read. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite one shots. So this is one that will just leave you completely satisfied. I have reread this. I plan to reread it. It just always puts me in a very great mood. And it's just extremely extremely good i don't know what else i can say about this but like the back says it's boys love cooked to perfection as cheesy as it sounds this story is just perfect my next pick started as a one shot it does have a spin-off and the spin-off is actually good as well but i'm specifically going to talk about this guy this is restart after coming back home which is in a, again, very similar vein to our dining table, which is a coming to age story featuring two adult males. So here we have again an office worker <laughs> who happens to go back home. So he leaves his uh, office job in the city behind to go back to his rural town. He discovers that a lot hasn't changed, but then he meets this new guy who everyone in the town is completely in love with, and he's kind of like a little thrown off at the beginning. This story follows Koska right here, who is our ex-city boy who returns back home to this rural town where his family lives. And this absolutely adorable guy named Yamato. Two guys in this story are complete opposites. Koska is cold-hearted, stubborn, just kind of resents the fact that he had to like leave everything behind and go back to his hometown. And then you have Yamato who is this super positive person. Everybody in the town absolutely loves him and his bubbly personality. And you just kind of see them kind of clash heads with one another. But slowly and surely, Koska starts having a change of heart about Yamato. Not only as a friend, but maybe there's something more. <laughs> Of course, it's a romance as well. One of my favorite things about this story is the fact that both of the characters do a lot of growing within just one book. Kusuke, who is this stubborn, cold-hearted person, starts warming up to Yamato and learning more from him. And Yamato, who is this happy-go-lucky guy, there's a lot more than meets the eye. And there's a very, you know, a sad soul inside. So you get both of them just learning to appreciate one another, be there for one another. And the town, which like I mentioned, uh, it is a small rural town. So not the most, uh, you know, receptive towards things that are out of the norm, especially, you know, a gay couple. Um, they kind of start warming up to them as well. So overall, it's just a very cute read. This story will just put you in a good mood. Both of the characters are quite likable. And this will just take you on an emotional journey, maybe not as frustrating as I cannot reach you. <laughs> But it's a satisfying emotional journey and there are some adorable moments like I I need to find I need to find one of these moments. I mean sometimes it's just small moments like these that will make my heart skip a beat. It's just mm. <laughs> when I reread this, I love this story so much. And last but not least, I have one of my favorite series that I have spoken about. I even mentioned it last year at the Best and Worst Manga of 2022 panel at San Diego Comic Con. We have Cherry Magic. First of all, before I start talking about this story, I just want to fangirl that when I tweeted the fact that I spoke about this series at San Diego Comic Con, the mangaka Yuto Yota was freaking out. <laughs> So there was me gushing about Yu's work and Yu just freaking out about the fact that uh, their story was mentioned at San Diego Comic Con. So it was like both of us <laughs> just like fangirling like about, you know, about each other in a way, which was just very, very surreal. <laughs> but back to Yu Toyota's work. 
Cherry Magic is a romantic comedy set in the office place. The whole premise is just super outlandish. I love explaining it to people because it's just such a fun story to have to sell to others. So basically the whole premise is you have a 30 year old virgin when he turns 30 he gains magical wizard powers and can suddenly hear people's thoughts <laughs> which sounds absolutely insane i mean the, just the fact that when you turn 30 and you're still a virgin you just gain these magical powers sounds crazy he can read people's minds and while that sounds cool at first um it's not because Imagine he works at an office, if he goes into the elevator where it's crowded and cramped, he's literally listening into everyone's thoughts. If he goes to a cramped metro, he's listening to everyone's intrusive thoughts. So yeah, I don't think that's a cool power to have personally, especially as an introvert. But thanks to those powers, he discovers that the cool office worker that everyone admires actually <laughs> really, really likes Alechi to the point that it, he sounds like he sounds like a little fangirl, honestly. Like he's just like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm in the same room as Alechi. Like I love how ridiculous <laughs> the story is. And the fact that the cool calm collective guy just is having this just freak out every single time that he's with Alechi. Like every moment, he's just like, oh my god, there's Alechi, I love him, he's so cute, blah blah blah. It's basically like if you put my stupid thoughts about like Gent Ito or something on paper, okay? So yeah, it's just such a cute, funny read. Alechi is just this. Alechi is a mess, let's be real, he's such a mess, <laughs> but who wouldn't be a mess if you're just given these powers and you're naturally a very awkward person. I know I've mentioned that I loved every single protagonist in the series that I've recommended in this video, but Kurosawa and Alechi just have a very special place in my heart. I mean, they're completely polar opposites. You have the cool common collective Kurosawa that has... <laughs> these kind of like high school girl thoughts in his head about his crush and then you have Alechi who's just this anxious mess <laughs> so their interactions are just so pure and so just uh, this one also has my heart just like doing cartwheels like I just want to show you how freaking mm, I love Kurosawa so much in this series just look at him he's so sweet nurturing and tender and so patient as well like this is something that you'll see in the earlier volumes he is so incredibly patient towards Alechi he doesn't force himself onto him and just kind of lets him you know come to the realization and embark on the on the friendship that turns into a romantic relationship. Of course, it's not smooth sailing. I mean, how would it be smooth sailing when you have someone that's like super awkward and just an emotional wreck like Alechi? But it's just a very fun journey about identity, about embarking on something completely new, something that is completely scary for Alechi. I am so giddy just like <laughs> flipping through the pages like I love this series so damn much. It is funny, it is heartwarming, it is so entertaining. Uh, Kurosawa and Alechi are just like OTP. I freaking adore those two. And the fact that they're both in their 30s, you know, having these realizations, jumping into a relationship, questioning their identity, and just doing a lot of self-discovery. I adore this. This is such a fantastic read. If you have not picked up Cherry Magic, definitely do so, especially if you happen to enjoy a longer BL because uh, there's more than three volumes. <laughs> there's definitely more than three volumes. There are currently 11 volumes in Japan. I have nothing but great things to say about Cherry Magic. There is a live action adaptation as well, but the manga 
is fantastic. <laughs> you Toyota, I will always fangirl about you. That is it for this video. I could talk about my favorite BLs for hours, but I won't do that. <laughs> At least not today. If you want to hear me talk about BL for hours, let me know and I will figure something out. I don't know. I mean, I can talk about some of my favorite stories for a very long time. Let me know what your favorite BLs are in the comments below. I will list all of the series that I spoke about in this video in the information bar. And please be on the lookout for more pride recommendations in the coming days because I definitely have some more. <laughs> So if you're brand new, make sure to subscribe to keep up with my content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Happy Pride!